Hey, Internet. Welcome back to another episode of Retro Game Showcase with your host, Just Some Retro Gamer. Does anyone remember the 32X? Basically, it was an add-on that lets you play more advanced games on the Sega Genesis console. It's generally considered a failure, but it did have its own set of interesting games. Keep in mind I said interesting, which doesn't really equivocate to good. With that in mind, today we're going to be taking a look at the bug-based platformer Tempo for the Sega 32X. Tempo was released for the 32X in 1995 by developer Red. Our game takes place in Rhythma, a place where all the world's a stage, according to the manual. You take on the role of Tempo, a grasshopper who uses the power of music to try and take down King Dirge. Wait, grasshopper? I don't see it. And his League of Minions in the Major Minor Show. Upon loading up the game, you are greeted by a mid-90s techno hip-hop theme based on the bug himself. Yo, homie, peep, peep, tempo, and check it out, you know, he makes it funky, and he's good to go, oh, thing, catch the move with New York, L.A., and San Francisco. I'm sorry, but is it just me, or does Tempo look like he's rocking some floppy butt cheeks here? Starting the game brings you to a stage select. Look at how happy he is. He's just happy to be here. He can't even contain himself. You can press up to go to another floor with more stages and bosses from the main level, or go down to the bonus area. More on that later. Choose a level and hop right into the action. Ha! Ah! Oh, <laughs> get it? Because it's, he's a grasshopper. You get it, you get it. Come on. We, we, both, we both know you get it, and you're groaning about it. Tempo has several moves at his disposal. He can slow his descent when you press and hold jump in the air. You can dash by double tapping either left or right. Pressing the jump button lets Tempo perform a springing jump. Hitting the kick button while dashing performs a sliding kick. Tempo can kick his enemies in front of him, as well as execute a back kick if he kicks while ducking. You can fling musical notes at your enemies to stun them in place. Some enemies have to be stunned before jumping on them or kicking them. And speaking of kicking, you can also perform a wall kick maneuver by obviously kicking off a wall, which is great for getting a little bit of extra height. Alright, let's take a look at the levels themselves. What's a nice way to say that these stages are a visual assault on your senses? Ah, the levels are seizurific. It's kind of like the entirety of the 90s collided with the Nickelodeon Studios from the same era. Yeah, the stages range from uninspired to painfully vibrant, visually speaking anyway. Some of the backgrounds are very dull, like this level with the dancing bug creature. And others are either distracting, seizure-inducing, or... C can someone please tell me what I'm looking at here? Are, are, are those butt plums? And on top of that, the levels have this 2.5D look that I feel messes with the collision detection in the game. Like, for example, watch as I fly through these rings. How do I not get hit here? And then, when I fly through this next area, I get hit? I mean, I don't know. It's like his head doesn't exist on the sprite model or something. I don't know. This game also suffers from the dreaded, where do I go now syndrome, where level design doesn't really flow well together. Outside of these little arrows, the level is pretty much all over the place, in some cases, quite literally. The other issues I have with the levels themselves is that they almost feel like they're too small. Or perhaps tempo is too big, I don't know. Every time you jump, you're hitting your head on a ceiling or smashing into a wall. The bosses, in my opinion, don't fit very well with the world. They appear to be computer generated, and as such just don't mesh very well with the game's sprites. The music is actually pretty catchy. 
Which is good, considering the entire premise of the game pretty much revolves around music. And speaking of music, let's talk about the collectibles, since they all have to do with sound of some sort. You can collect music notes to regain any lost health. You can also collect headphones to boost your health bar. Grab floating CDs for invincibility and flying cows? Collect the floating LP, or records for you youngins, and gain the power to fly for a short time as well as launch LPs at your foes. Picking up the audio cassette doubles your point count for a short time. The giant music note gives you points based on your current health status and then refills your health bar. And finally, touching the dance text makes all the enemies dance to death, drop coins, and summons this fleshy metapod. These are words you never think you'd say together in your life. And then weird video games happen, and, and you do. Katie, Tempo's sidekick, emerges from these cocoons. If you stun an enemy, Katie will fly over and attack them for you. I find that she is especially useful against bosses too, allowing you to keep your distance and continuously stun them, letting her take them down for you. Except this clown right here. I hate this clown. He blocks your notes, he blocks you from jumping on him, or blocks you from kicking him. Then he grabs these falling dance icons before you have a chance to react, inflicting unblockable damage to you. And to top it all off, when you lose to him, you have to wait for his long victory dance before you can even try again. Frustrating. <sighs> you can always blow off some steam though. Just head down to the bonus area below the stage. The first bonus stage has you eating a pizza to the beat. Simply press the button when it says now. You <laughs> sly dog, not too shabby. The second is surfing. Press the button when it says now again. I am horrible at this. And finally, this rock smashing minigame. Same as before, hit it when it says now. I clearly don't follow instructions so good. I didn't own a 32X when I was younger. I actually got it more recently for my game collection. Game-wise, the game itself isn't terrible, but visually, it's too intense in my opinion. It's like the game is trying a little too hard. As of this video, Tempo's going for anywhere between $40 and $50 on eBay. Which is pretty good for me, considering I only picked it up for about $5 a couple of years ago. This is another one of those cases where the game itself doesn't look anything like the label art at all. When I first loaded it up, I figured, oh, maybe this is just the wrong game. But it's not. It really has this for label art. Why? The character design was fine, you could have just went with it. Whatever. Tempo is definitely a product of its time and it shows. From the intro theme right down to the overly bright and bouncy graphics, you can tell this game came out in the mid-90s. The game itself is a very average game with headache-inducing visuals. It's not bad, but it's not exactly good. There are a lot of positive reviews out there for it, but perhaps this just isn't my game. My retro rating for Tempo is 4 out of 10. And if you're looking for something similar to Tempo, but maybe a little better in my opinion, I would definitely recommend Earthworm Jim on the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, or perhaps even Rayman for PC or the original PlayStation. And thus ends another Retro Game Showcase. Please like, subscribe, and all that jazz. Remember to keep the beat and keep on gaming!